Hi everybody, welcome to the latest in our series of videos on the mind setting program produced by Back to Black. And um, today what we're going to talk about is self-awareness and strengths. And the first question I was going to ask was to Roger actually, um, although it applies to Steve as well, which is that, you know, I, I guess for both of you, your physical strengths um, were, would, be, would have been obvious really early in your um, sporting life. But how did you cope when you sort of got to an elite level when um, everybody else at that level had the same physical strengths? Yeah, it's a great question, Malcolm, because the, you're right. The truth is, in, in a sport is actually very unfair. Um, I think you can get to a quite a high level in sport if you've been given a, a, a good amount of physical talent. Uh, you know, it's quite clear that you know, you know someone who can just run fast. They're not necessarily training hard. And I was that kid at school. You know, you've been given those that talent, that physical strength, and and you can do really well on that. But what we learned was, of course. When you're starting to operate at the highest levels, and of course in our game, the Olympic Games, then every single person at those Olympic Games has been given an abundance of physical talent. And therefore, talent's not enough. And of course, the, the mental side to it, the bit that, that fascinates us now and fascinated us as athletes, because you can't see that. You know, it's obvious when you look at Usain Bolt, it's obviously he can run fast. You can see that. You, know, you can see Steve Backley's built to throw a javelin. You, know, you can probably see from me, I'll, I'll be a pretty good runner but you can't see what's going on inside your head. Um, and, and of course, that, that's the difference. That's the bit that fascinated us. That's the bit that we talk about a lot now. Um, and that's the bit that the better you become at something, that's the bit you need to focus on because so many people take it for granted. They think that just being physically talented is enough. It might be enough to get you, it might be enough to get you to the Olympics actually, but it won't be enough to win the medals because when you're there, everyone's great. So Steve and I worked incredibly hard at that. And that's what our mindset program in essence is all about, isn't it, Steve? Oh, it's funny. I, I smile, Roger, because, you know, you say, you know, I'm physically maybe set up to, to throw javelins, but I started out wanting to be a 400 meter runner like you. Uh, you obviously, you weren't successful at that time. It was before you, you know, really made your mark. But I had the same passion as, as, as you had as a kid. And, and it, take, it took actually a few years to have that self-awareness to realize I didn't have, um, you know, what we call the ticket to the party. I didn't have the, the, the you know, the, 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 the setup to be successful at that, at that event, but it was my passion. And, and then I found the javelin, which gave me that kind of, um, well, it was a fit. And I think, you know, there's, there's a bunch of things, there's a bunch of reasons for that physically and, and, you know, mindset, you know, everything about it, there was, a, there was a perfect fit, but it, I think the, the, the question is, it comes back to self-awareness and the decision making, because every decision that we make on a second by second, minute by minute basis can take us in one of a, of a number of directions, but it all starts with a self-awareness. And, and, and what we encourage as, as part of our program is of course, is taking those, uh, taking the time to pause and, and take everything and say, where are we guys? Where are we gonna go next? Rather than firefighting and, you know, pushing forward. And, you know, I'm, I'm sort of thinking back to moments of pressure where we have to remind ourselves of our strengths and our weaknesses to, to thrive. Um, so yeah, a bunch of stuff going on there, but I think there's also a little bit of luck, if I'm honest, in finding the fit. Um, you know, keep looking is obviously important, but we were both fortunate we found something that we could excel at. I guess in business, the equivalent is, a, is having a unique selling point for your business. Yes. Yeah, I guess it is. I mean, I mean, I mean, the interesting thing, if you think of our business, you know, our business has had to evolve over the last few months, as I'm sure it has for other people, to move it as, as, as much online as possible, because we're in the people business. You know, we, our unique selling point is there are two, two old Olympians who can stand in a room with 200 people. And, and hold you know and put on a great performance and, and you know entertain and give some insights that's gone I mean that our unique selling point has gone I mean that we can't do that you know there have no, been no events for the last six seven months that doesn't look like they're going to be any for a very long time but our unique selling point is still the same there's still the two of us um, so we've had to find other ways to adapt and to change and, and that's taken a lot of self-awareness and, and it's been tough and it is tough. We're not going to pretend it isn't. Our business has been, been massively affected by, by COVID. But uh, we have enough self-awareness, I hope, between, between us and, and the team around us to make those changes and to find a different way. 
That, that's brilliant. Thanks for that. Well, uh, we'll see you next week with my next question. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thank you.